Time now for Dollars and Cents, where I answer your money questions and help you navigate a changing economy. Improving your finances doesn't have to be complicated. In fact, some of the best advice can fit on a little index card, just like this one. Tonight, we explore nine simple money rules that can go a long way in helping you build your financial strength. We all have bills to pay. Uh, we're all working on a budget on a weekly, monthly basis, but you have to pay yourself first. One way to do that is to follow nine money rules. I wish I could say I came up with this idea, but the credit goes to Harold Pollack, a University of Chicago social scientist. He says all the investment advice you'll ever need fits on a single index card. Most of the rules fall into two buckets, saving and investing. The rules are maximize your 401k, buy inexpensive mutual funds, never buy or sell an individual security, save 20% of your money, pay your credit card balance in full each month, maximize tax advantage savings vehicles, and pay attention to fees. Rules 8 and 9 are more philosophical. Make financial advisors commit to a fiduciary standard and promote social insurance programs. The first one is maxing your 401k. That seems pretty easy. Can you explain that for our viewers? Oftentimes, these companies will do matching contributions to whatever you put into your 401k. We eloquently call that uh, free money because that's exactly what it is. And if you don't participate in a 401k plan, oftentimes you're not eligible to receive those matching contributions. Staying on the idea of saving, remember numbers four and six. Save 20% of your money and also set up other kinds of savings accounts that grow tax-free, like Roth IRAs and 529 college savings accounts. Or the higher percentage that you save, the more quickly your net worth is going to grow. Saving your money is great, but you'll also want to invest it too. Those are numbers two and three. Sacramento-based financial planner Joseph Eshelman recommends being diverse, spreading your investments in different areas, including inexpensive mutual funds. Rule number three means you could better position yourself for consistent and reliable financial growth if you utilize the expertise of professional investors. This is a great one too. We hear, and we've talked about it before, paying your credit card balance in full. Tell me more about that. Why is that so important for yeah. a lot of viewers and consumers out there? And anytime you carry a balance on your credit card, you're paying interest to the credit card company. If you're paying it off every month, you're not paying interest. Obviously, hopefully that means more money in your pocket to build, build and save and, and grow your net worth. And you can also grow your wealth by paying attention to fees. That's rule seven. When you invest, high fees just eat into your gains, and fees are hard to avoid totally. But experts say prioritizing low-fee investments is a smart thing to do for long-term financial success. And Chris, that brings me to rules eight and nine. And I know you <laughs> said they're a little more philosophical, right? Yeah, they're a little heavy-handed, so stick with me. Uh, rule eight means your financial advisor should be committed to what's called a fiduciary standard. Some big terms, mm -hmm. right? But it's an important term in the finance world. It means the advisor is legally obligated to act in your best interest, not the company that they work for or something like that, right? And Rule 9 encourages us to promote social insurance programs like Social Security, unemployment, and disability insurance to help people when things go wrong. The idea here being these programs help with social and economic stability, ultimately benefiting all of us. Now, the conversation does, doesn't end here. Just scan that QR code to see all my dollars and cents coverage and send me your money questions. You can also find them on our website, abc10.com.